next. We are joined now by Benham Ben Talablu. He's a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Benham, thank you very much for being here uh, once again these early hours of the morning as we take stock of what has happened over the past 20 wonder as you listen to President Biden talk about this and convene a meeting of the G7 today, as you listen to Prime Minister Netanyahu's response, what you believe comes next, Benham? Well, great to be with you again. That really is the most important question, what does come next? Certainly for Israel, what must come next is some way to restore deterrence. Uh, an enemy that has been fighting you in the shadows for 45 years, all of a sudden coming out, crossing several red lines, crossing several thresholds, and allegedly all doing so in response to uh, an Israeli attack on what is alleged to be a, a consular annex where the Israelis killed uh, several members of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. This is a marked escalation by the regime, uh, not just a mere attempt to achieve parity in relation to that. So for Israel, uh, which has long looked to reestablish military deterrence firmly against non-state actors, uh, for a state actor to be able to strike uh, Israeli territory. And now, fortunately, many of these um, uh, missiles and drones were intercepted. But for a state actor to be able to do this and get away scot-free, that would lead to much worse things in the Middle East. So certainly, I think the Israelis have military action at the top of their list of priorities, thinking about targets, thinking about pathways, uh, but also ho hopefully working with their international partners and their most important partner, the U.S., to build a larger coalition to continue to constrain and roll back the Islamic Republic. And hopefully this can get the world to wake up and realize how serious of a threat Tehran actually is. I wonder what is going on in Tehran, though, right now, Benham. Uh, the Supreme Leader, Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, said in a, uh, a post on X, in a video that was posted on X last week, that, as he put it, quote, the malicious Zionist regime will be punished. That was ahead of this attack. Uh, in essence... Um, Israel was not punished because Israel's air defense systems, along with the U.S. support, worked so well. So is Iran thinking it has to do more, or are they, as, they, as the, the Islamic Republic leaders hinted overnight, uh, drawing a line under all of this now? I think part of the undistributed middle here, or part of what the Islamic Republic is really banking on, is having been seen as publicly, again, crossing that threshold, crossing that red line, not, and not only being able to get away scot-free, but being able to have America constrain or retain uh, the Israelis uh, from being able to respond militarily or getting a larger coalition together against Tehran. That might be the only thing right now giving the regime in Tehran confidence after the performance of some of its uh, missile and drone forces. Although I will say tonight, though, this is still not a reason to undervalue and ignore Iran's ballistic missile arsenal, which is the largest in the Middle East, by the way. Tonight and yesterday are days of successes for integrated air and missile defense and partner-to-partner -partner military cooperation. Uh, now, President Biden has called for this meeting of the G7. Uh, it's going to happen later on Sunday. What do you think the G7 should be aiming to do, and what do you think they will be able to achieve? There is tons of low-hanging fruit, particularly on the European side, and particularly on the drone and missile issue uh, that needs to be done. For example, the Europeans, which last October retained about 200 missile, military, and nuclear sanctions that they were supposed to waive pursuant to their continued adherence to the 2015 Iran nuclear deal called the JCPOA, they retained those. But now they have to build on those. And Washington needs to be able to help Europe come up with new targets that it itself has already sanctioned and socialize them across the pond in the Atlantic to create a new web of missile sanctions to put more pressure on the regime's missile, military, and drone programs. Beyond that, they need to come up with a strategy at the United Nations, particularly at the United Nations Security Council, to snap back and restore older multilateral penalties on Iran that include a permanent arms ban uh, to and from the Islamic Republic, a permanent ballistic 
dismissal testing and transfer injunction uh, on the Islamic Republic. These things used to exist. They lapsed with the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, mm -hmm. poised to be Iran's lawyer on the Security Council, uh, essentially until kingdom come. Uh, we have only until October 2025 to snap back or reset that. So a strategy for snap back has to be set as well, as well as for rigorous oil sanction enforcement with all members mm -hmm. of the G7. And Addressing Ben and Ben Talabludi on the uh, diplomatic and the military steps that need to and may be taken. Ben, with us through these early morning hours here, we really appreciate you staying up with us and for all your insights.